Hey everyone, it's Dr. Tracy. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm running late today. I got stuck in doctor's offices, offices, a doctor's office, and uh, finally am able to swing back around to the house. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Silver Lining. It's nice to see you. Um, we have a, a really great show. First and foremost, welcome to the next episode of 16 and Me. Who's ready for a little bit more 16 and me? Okay, let's see who's loading on. Uh, Bogum, nice to see you. Queen Partner, nice to see you. My Linda Kimball, nice to see you. Everybody's logging in from different parts of the world. So I have a, a really good show today. I have a really good guest today. Hi, Janet. It's nice to see you. Uh, as we get to know more about 16 and me. So, last week, I introduced a concept that's really important when it comes to managing your 16. But before I jump into that, let me first, for all of our first-time guests who are joining us, let me first, can you guys hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Uh, let me first uh, do an overview as to who exactly is 16. So I always say that, especially as a woman, we have like 17 different personas inside of us. And we all know each other. We all get along famously, except for when it comes to 16. And 16 is that persona inside of us that has an ego out to here, issues out to here, fears out to here. And it's that inner critical voice that if we're not aware that that critical voice can operate, it can literally derail our entire life. Now, here's the thing about that inner critical voice is that in the world of psychology, it has a name. It's called the pathological critic. In the, the world of, of Buddhism, they call it Maya. In Christianity, they might call it the devil. <laughs> in spiritual circles, some of them call it the shadow feminine. Well, around here, I call it 16, <laughs> and I've always called it 16. And so there was one time that I, I, I got this visual download, and I'm like, okay, why is her name 16? And I got this visual download where it, it looked like the Last Supper table, and around this table there were 17 personas, <laughs> and 16 was taking up like 15 seats at the table. And I realized that one of the reasons I was sabotaging so much in my life is that when it comes to success, this inner persona, this critical voice that actually represents traumas in our life only gets one seat at the table. And it's not that we can completely kick her out of our life because she is a part of something that we have survived and experienced but we certainly can't give her 17 seats at the table, 16 seats at the table, 15 seats at the table. No, no, 16 gets one seat at the table. And so this show is all about learning how, how to recognize that inner critic that lives inside of you, to celebrate it. In other words, you're here, we get it. Yet to silence it, to edit it, <laughs> which means that we got to cut down this narrative and get to empower us to step into the next best pure definition of self. Okay, who's with me? There's Janet, there's Emily. Hey, Emily, by the way, big congratulations on the release of your first song. Laura, it's nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining in. And let's see, Say Media. Thank you for joining us, Say media. Well, today I'm waiting for a, a guest to, to log on. I have not quite yet seen her yet. Um, okay, but so last week, 
I, I introduced the concept, and this is something that's super important for you. Uh, when is the next Mrs. Globe? Uh, Laura, you know what you could do is you can log on to the Mrs. Globe uh, website and we have all that information over to you, the Mrs. Globe website or the Mrs. Globe handle. We have weekly shows, but it's coming up in June just to answer your question. Hello, Lynn Princess. Nice to see you. Hello, Vasva. Nice to see you. Okay, so when it comes to... Um, to 16. Last week I gave you a kind of like a word picture to help you better understand your 16. Now, what are the, some of the things that we already know about 16? 16 is that critical voice, that, that shadow feminine, that self-sabotage that just wells up inside of us and, you know, who needs abusers in our life when it, it just lives right here in our thought process? It all comes from trauma, just to let you know. So last week I gave this really great example that 16 is uh, basically has many, uh, she has a huge wardrobe that she puts on. And sometimes she gets up in the morning and she puts on her judge's suit, right? Uh, sometimes uh, she puts on her pencil skirt perfectionist suit. Sometimes she puts on her super scaredy cat la, 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 suit. Sometimes she puts on her diva suit where she has to give pushback at everything because her ego is so big she thinks she knows everything about everything and she's not open to this thing called um, learning and expanding. Hello, tourism, John Singh. Hello, John Singh. I haven't seen you in such a long time. I was just thinking about you the other day. I hope everyone's well. Hello, Lisa. It's nice to see you as well. So, what are the things that you, you need to do is that you need to become aware of when 16 shows up and more important, what wardrobe did she show up in. So I was I'm going through this this thing of mine, and right now I have it pretty much uh, under normal mental control. But one of the suits that my 16 decided to show up in when I was processing through all this was she came in in like her... Um, her her death doom outfit wearing black seeing everything negative because she was like a super negaholic well the guest that i'm bringing on today when i was asking her i'm like okay uh, talk to me about your 16 that uh she said that her 16 shows up as the great dismisser does anybody identify with that the great dismisser and when I asked her to, to share with me, you know, what do you mean that she shows up as the great dismisser? She began saying this, like she just dismisses any dreams that I might have. She dismisses, uh, you know, I, I go to set a goal or an aspiration and she's like, uh, yeah, you can't, you can't really do that. Right. Let me just check in to see if she's here. She's not yet here with us. I'm going to give her just a few more minutes. And if not, I'm going to open up the floor to somebody who would like to come on. And we're going to talk about your 16. So here's, here's what I want to sidebar with as I'm waiting for my guest. One of the most important things that you need to understand about 16 is that every voice, we are not born with 16, okay? Let me just emphasize that. We are not born with it. That internal shouting voice uh, stems from a trauma that we've been experienced, experienced. Because in life, there are these things that are called life-defining moments. And when you experience a life-defining moment, you go into it, you succeed, 
and you learn that oh, life can be a really good place. However, <laughs> you can also go into a moment, completely fail or experience something absolutely awful and the message that got imprinted on your soul was literally life is an awful place. The birthing place of 16 is negative life defining moments. And I'm going to share something with you. When I was a little girl, I, I was, I think I was in fourth grade. I, okay, I just want to say this. I am the biggest sissy in the world when it comes to enduring pain. Like, the second something starts to hurt me, I go into a panic zone. 16 goes, oh my God, you're going to hurt forever. <laughs> and so the smallest little pain that I experience, I'm suddenly going to experience this pain forever. It is never going to have an end in sight. I'm going to have to live with this pain literally for the rest of my life <laughs> really quickly. Hello, Marilyn Choi. It's nice to see you. Hi, Andrea. It's nice to see you, Emily. Wow, so good. I uh, have to run into a meeting learning so much. All right, you're welcome. Um, okay, so why does 16 launch and tell me it, and so what this has made me afraid to do, it has made me afraid to experience certain things because in the back of my head, what happens is I go, oh my gosh, if I do that, I might get hurt. And if I get hurt, I'm going to be in pain forever. And I really don't want to be in pain forever. Okay, so why would these dramatic thoughts uh, go to such extremes? Well, the answer was when I was a little girl, I broke my arm at school one day, and it was way back when, and at the time when there were four kids in our family, and my dad was at work, my mom didn't have a car at the time, and I had to lay in the infirmary with a broken arm for four hours, and let me tell you, that broke me. That broke me. That's when I realized, like, okay, people aren't really here to help you. <laughs> that if you go into a pain cycle, nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody's going to come rescue you. And in order to get help, it takes a really, really, really long time. And you know what I do to this day? To this day, I go into pain cycles and I just find myself starting to kind of like white knuckle my way through it because 16 is going like, nobody's going to come help. There is absolutely no cure to this pain. And you know what? Obviously, you're meant to live in pain. <laughs> Any of this making sense? All right. So this is what 16 does for us. So one of the things that I want you to do this week, and I think... I think my guest forgot about me. So who would like to come uh, on the show right now and share a little bit of 16? If you do, go ahead and, and send a request. Andrea, I know you're out there. Well, I would love to hear a little update with what's going on with your 16. Alicia Polo's out here. I know that you're out there watching. Uh, if you want to give us a little 16 about how the runway, how 16's runway in your living room is going, I would absolutely love to hear that. Go ahead and send a little a friend request in. But what I want you to do this week is I want you to start identifying what's some of the wardrobe that 16 shows up in. Does she show up in, in her perfectionism? Does she show up as the big scaredy cat? Does she show up as, um, as the shamer, as the blamer, as the, the historian? Because one of the, the really debilitating ways is that 16, she's the historian. Are you aware of all the mistakes that you have made? You're not, oh, allow me then to start to pull them up. <laughs> and she begins one by one by one, pulling up each and every one of our, uh, each and every one of, of our, uh, there we go mistakes that are on the, on the history. And you know what the whole thing is? 
that we are entitled to make mistakes. Oh, there we are. Hey. Oh. Thank you for jumping in. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on. Hey, li <laughs> listen, you gave one of the best um, quotes, I, I, we actually featured it in, in our 16 uh, and me quote of the week, which was, my 16 moved in in January and basically built a runway in my living room. Yeah, yes. she just like took right over the table of all my personalities and just right down the center of it. Okay, bring us up to date. How's the runway going? Has she dismantled the runway? What are some of the skills that you did to uh, to get things back to center. Yeah, it's good. Better, better, good. Delete, delete. Yes. Yeah, so she got put back in her chair and sat back down and everyone has their own plates in front of them again. And she's taken her turn. Yeah. So, you know, the, it's really important to know that, that some, it because it's such a real penetrating voice, right? that that can just convince us that it's our voice talking instead of understanding this is a trauma wound this is a fear this is this is a, a part of my history that things didn't go right and so i'm holding on to a wrong memory that that it's really important for us to remember that as soon as we can grab hold of the concept that you know i don't have to buy into this reality Right. I don't have to buy into this reality that we have the power to start speaking back to the thought. And it's, it's that pushback when we, you know, she, she pushes and pushes and pushes and pushes on us. And when we learn to give that pushback is when we start to get our power back. So can you share with uh, some of the pushback statements you gave to your 16 when you started to have her dissemble her runway. <laughs> so I had to just like delete some of the comments. So she likes to, my 16 likes to um, should on me, like we had said before. So she likes to, oh, you should be doing this and dare to compare. So um, I was feeling a little bit insecure <laughs> about stepping down from like um, handing over my title and then what's next. I was feeling the void of what's to come, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so January being a big goal setting month and then COVID was limiting what you could do and then what should I be doing? And so I was just feeling heavy and insecure about the future. What, what, what is my next step? Mm -hmm. And so my 16 was, oh, what, what do you have? What, what you got? <laughs> I got nothing, right? That's what I was feeling. And so I had to really do some reflecting and some goal setting and just really journaling and writing everything down and putting everything into perspective of, okay, that's not true. I don't have nothing. And you know, you have to have nothing, like nothing in the entire world. You're the, right. You just lost everything. <laughs> right. And like I have, I'm not, I'm not one foot in the grave. Right? Like there's not, I'm not actually, walking over the edge of the Grand Canyon and there's nothing before me and there's a void of nothing. But that's how I was feeling. I was feeling so like there's nothing. It's a big black hole in front of me because I've already hit a peak, like you had said. Like when you come off of a high of hitting a success point, something that you worked for, and then you don't pre-plan for what's next or you don't have necessarily a, a goal-setting method of where you're going to go next, it's like you have this plateau, but the plateau is lonely and it's scary and you don't know where you're, and you don't, like I'm, I like to have a goal and I didn't have one. And then I felt depleted. My balloon was deflated and I needed to repump up my balloon with belief and love. Right. Yeah. And so I had to re, um, refocus, reshift and uh, delete all those shouldings on me and what I should have done because there was things that I wanted to do, but because of COVID, we couldn't do. So I had to have a little bit of a grieving process, too. I feel like I had to literally grieve for what, instead of dragging that dead baggage with me, because those aren't going to happen. So I had to, like, grieve it, let it go, get it all off me, right? Put her back in her chair, and then move on. And now I just had to refocus. I love it. You know what I call those moments? 
I call them BMW moments. You know, um, to me, Alicia, thought is everything. Thought is everything because thought is energy. And especially as a woman, I think that we're guilty, especially as a woman who we try to be positive. We want to be positive, you know, by DNA. We, we want to have more of a, uh, a, an inspiring type of an outlook. And so what happens oftentimes is when, when we, we dip or when we experience something that wasn't in the agenda, never signed up for this, how did this get into my, <laughs> my, my, my sight line? Um, we tend to, and especially if you put trauma on, on, on in, in the addition to that, where you're, you kind of get used to tolerating low grade to high grade pain, is that what happens is we begin to literally suck it up buttercup, you know, and we mm -hmm. suck it up and we suck it up and we hold it in and we hold it in. And though on the outside, we might be appearing that we're okay, there is so much noise running on the background that that's what's going to sabotage us. And, and what happens is, especially if you, you add the empathic nature into it, is that, you know, we try to be having conversations right here, but all of this in 16 is screaming in the background. And so what we need to do at, at moments of, of that is exactly what you, you did. Um, I call it having a BMW moment. And a BMW moment is when all that negative, fearful, doubting, scary, all that stuff that's sitting inside of us, that you literally have a bleep, moan, and whine moment. And you scream, and you cry, and you maybe use a four letter word <laughs> and you just purge your emotional system of all of those, those high energy toxic emotions that are inside of you because our emotional system is like a glass of water. It can only hold so much. And if we are so built up with all that, that negative energy inside of us, there's no room for the positive to get in there. Even if you read 10, 10 positive books a day, if what's running in the background is all that stress and negativity, it's not going to penetrate because there's mm -hmm. no room. So you actually need to do exactly what you, need to, what you did was stop, cry, mourn, feel what you need to feel, release it, and then is when there's finally space for you to see the gratitude in something, a new vision, a new dream, um, a positive voice rather than 16's frightening voice. There's mm -hmm. a, it's, it's like the calm after the storm, but sometimes I call them BMW moments. We just need to create that storm storm and purge our emotional system of things and and you know people might say that does not sound like the most feminine way to get through things well I don't care all I know is that it works is that you know if you've tried you know, the prayer and the meditation and and you've tried you're know, going on your long walks getting enough sleep drinking more water taking the hot baths and it's still just right there go have a BMW moment, you know, take 15 minutes of your day and just blow out your, all that toxicity inside of you, get it out of your system. And it works. It, and it was, it was like a grieving process. It felt like, that's what I said, like I was exhausted. I felt like I grieved and I had to, I had to like let it go because my, I felt like my headspace was so full it was that there was no room. And I was just feeling, I was feeling heavy. Like I said, when we were talking about, I was just feeling, I was just like, Bleh like my head felt heavy. I just felt like there was no room and I had no clarity. Like I couldn't, I felt like I was in a fog, like a brain fog because I wasn't letting go of my wants from before, but they were never going to come to fruition because that was done. But I wasn't letting go of like, but, uh, 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 right. Like they weren't, there was yeah. no, they were, they were not going to penetrate. And so I had to like let them go. Yeah, we have to let them go. And, and I really believe that when it comes to especially dreams, that 
that there's a difference between um, a dream being done and a dream needing a dream do-over or makeover. Right. And when a dream is done, it's done. Like you actually look at you and go like, you know what, it, it would have been nice, but I just don't, I don't have the passion in it. But if that dream is still there and it's still, you're just like, I really kind of still want that experience in my life. And that means that we're supposed to have it. It just needs to have a do-over, a makeover. It needs to get more modernized. And that's where you just go to the universe and you're like, can you, can you reinvent this into something that's more applicable to who I am today, what I am today, the dynamics that I have today? Because you put that dream in my heart, which if that dream is in my heart, it means it's meant to come to fruition. And, you know, and, and until it dies, it's not done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just needs to be like the perspective needs to change. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm changing. And, and sometimes as we grow, the dream needs to grow with us. The, the dream can't be the little kid dream it was when you were a little kid, right? It has to manifest into who we are now. And exactly. you just have to change it as we go. So to grieve what it was so you can have room for what it will be, right? Yeah, the analogy, get... the analogy that I use a lot is, you know, if you were young, 13 years old, and you always wanted to be a cheerleader, um, and, and you're 60, you might want to rethink what that cheerleading uniform looks like. <laughs> Doesn't mean you can't be a cheerleader, maybe a cheerleading coach, or maybe, you know, an inspirational different things, but you got to You can take the dream. You just have to tweak it to that, which is, is more appropriate, um, and executable in your life for today. Mm -hmm. Let's Mrs. see. Mrs. Curvey, literally living these dreams and bigger. Well, listen, Alicia, thank you so much yeah, for, you. for jumping on today. I'm glad that the, the runway in your living room is down. Yeah, me too. And, <laughs> and thank you for sharing um, about that important point of, you know, in, in order to stop 16's voice, Sometimes there are things that you, you need to just stop and grieve. And, you know, grieving comes in all sorts of different forms. For me, you know, sometimes it's a BMW. It's a bleep, moan, and whine. And I just need to feel what I need to feel from my, from my anger to my fear to my sadness to my frustration to my confusion. Have a good cry, a good journal. Uh, Andrea, having a BMW moment. That's right. Have a good one, Andrea. <laughs> you know where some really good BMW moments are? Uh, in taking a hot shower when you're all alone, you can just ha totally have good BMW moments in there. <laughs> <'Cause> people, <laughs> that's a really good one. Don't recommend it when you're driving in the car. <laughs> Not in this day. <laughs> all right, guys. Listen, for those Thank of you, you who who feel like you're holding your breath in life and when you're holding your breath, it launches your 16, you know, well, you should have and you could have and why didn't you and this never going to happen. Rather than buy into it, take a, oops, I just lost Alicia. Take a, a big BMW moment, do the grieving that you need to do. And then from there, when you purge all that negative emotion inside of you, it opens up to a beautiful new canvas to create something new in your life. All right. I send you guys lots of love uh, here from California, and we will see you next week. You know what I'm going to be talking about next week on 16 and Me? I'm going to be talking about 16, the great comparer. If you have a 16 that compares you to everyone, who? Definitely, definitely tune in. All right. Lots of love. See you guys next week.